Hello, uh, welcome. I am Petra Wright. I am the director of Gloria Delson Contemporary Arts, also known as GDCA Gallery. Uh, tonight, we are delighted to welcome you to a virtual reception of our two October exhibitions, a group exhibit, Sustain, and our solo exhibition, Karen Hansen, Still Together. Both shows are on display through October 31st and are available for in-person viewing by masked appointment. So masks are required and social distancing is enforced. Um, all of the works are for sale. So if you see anything that you love and you can't live without, please don't be shy to reach out. And if you need an immediate reference, you can go to our website. There is an exhibition catalog under the current exhibition tab. If you scroll to the right, past the installation stills, every artist is listed alphabetically with each of their individual artworks on display with all of the details and particulars, everything you need to know. So we began our evening with a lovely exhibition video made by Jason Ruscio. If you missed any part of it, please don't worry, we will repeat it at the end. But this was to give you an overview of all of the works that we're going to be introducing to you tonight. So next, we are going to take you through a slideshow presentation. This will move through both exhibits from the front to the back of the gallery. And we're going to, into, going to move into each section of every artist. And at that point, the artists will join us to discuss their work. In a few cases, when they're not able to be with us, I will stand in and speak for them. But we have artists joining us tonight from as far away as Lebanon. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, please do stick with us because at the end of the presentation, we are going to have a Q&A. So to that point, if you have a question for any of the artists, there is a button on the bottom of your Zoom screen that says chat. You can type in a question to any of the artists there. And then at the end of the presentation, we will pull up your questions and field them to the artists and they can answer them. So. Let's get started. <laughs> um, hold on. Oh, I'm going to share my screen to our presentation. Okay. So this is our group exhibit, Sustain. Participating artists are Nurit Avasar, Suzanne Belcher, Carol Cirillo Stanley, Siri France. Stacia Gates, Brooke Harker, Holly Heller, Jane Marshall, Crystal Michelson, Barbara Nathanson, Lily Fawn, and Robert Toll. The stand features painting, mixed media, photography, digital photo collage, digital woodblock collage, and sculpture. Our show statement reads, we honor best the giants upon whose shoulders we stand by, by continuing the work day by day of pursuing excellence, of sharing love, of living compassion, and standing up for those in need and for each other. This show was abstractly inspired by the fierce and awesome example of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, notorious RBG. May her memory be a blessing. So that brings us to our first artist, Holly Heller. Holly is not able to join us tonight, so I'm going to speak a little bit about her work. Holly has two series on display in this show. The um, first one is uh, the, actually, I have to go backwards, the split image label series, and then secondly, the uh, dyed layered textile imprint series. And um, what I like about both series is that it invites a conversation with 
uh, metaphors. So in the case of the split label series, it examines very much the concept of labels and how we as women, uh, our choices and our sense of self are directly influenced by said labels that are prescribed or um, through society. And, and we either have the choice to consciously or unconsciously, we are either informed by them and adhere to them, or we consciously try to transcend them. And I thought that was very interesting. The um, second series also offers a conversation about the uh, metaphor of quilts. These are uh, dyed layered textile pieces on them. And they remind visually of a quilt. And that brings up the whole conversation of craft and how female artists for so long were relegated to craft, that their art was acceptable in context of craft, but they struggled for many years to be, to have equal standing in the fine art world as their male artist counterparts. And on a personal note, um, Holly Heller was a textile designer. And in the beginning, when she just let go of her so-called day job and um, embraced was able to, to be a full-time artist, she really distanced herself from anything textile because she was crafting sort of the new identity of being a full-time artist. And I love the fact that with this work, she came full circle because personally, I feel that that is when we are our most authentic and fullest selves, when we own every part of our history, every aspect of ourselves and incorporate it into our new identity, our new chapter. So that was Holly Heller. And our next artist is Crystal Michelson. So I'd like to ask Crystal to join us, please. Crystal, are you there? I'm here. Hi. I'm going to mute myself, and I would like to invite you to please tell us about your beautiful pieces. Uh, first off, thank you, Petra. I'm so happy to be showing in this show with all these wonderful artists that I admire so much. Um, it's really wonderful to be able to have a place to have the art actually hanging and this virtual reception so it can be seen and thank you. Um, I just wanted to start off saying a little bit about my art. Uh, I, I kind of go by what Pablo Picasso said. All children are artists. The problem is how to remain an artist when he grows up or she grows up. And I love, love, love children's art. And I started as a young child coloring with my mom and scribbling and that is still with me now. It, uh, I, it took all these years of going to art school and studying serious drawing and painting and color theory and design and everything else to come back. What you were just talking about full circle, basically to being able to have the freedom to play and scribble and make mistakes. Cause, because I, I finally reached the point where I realized there are no mistakes. It's it, they're happy accidents. And then I just kind of let it go and I work with it. My work is highly layered. Uh, even though you might not see, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of history behind it. Um, these two pieces are part of the Scribble Me series that I that I started, and um, they're called Scribble Me: A Color Dance. As a young child, I was a dancer also, and these are, are very dear to me. They bring me back. They're almost um, like an homage to my childhood, and I created these recently during the COVID period and they really bring me a lot of joy um, from the darkness came this light lyrical fun space and um, this is my work this is this is some of my newest work and i hope to expand on this that's beautiful thank you thank you crystal i i think it's it's um it's really, really strong work. And I really love um, 
and something that's also consistently complimented about your work and remarked upon when people come to the gallery is that there is that palpable presence of an underlying story or an emotional subtext, you know, and it shines through the sometimes contrasting surface treatment, be it stillness or be it also like a, a playfulness and a lightheartedness that you bring into it. But it's always grounded and supported by a much deeper emotional base. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you. I, I do that because uh, partly it, 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 it I want to also welcome the viewer in so that they can see themselves and feel themselves in the in the work as well. Mm. So that's why it, it's not quite so, I, I'm not so literal in my work. Yeah, love but, it so much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, okay, that brings us to our next artist, which is Jane Marshall. Uh, oh, Jane, hi. <laughs> would you welcome us? Uh, sorry, would you join us? Please welcome. And um, would you tell us something about your work, please? Can I? Am I here? I do. Here. And I'm going to mute myself now to give you the stage if I can figure out how. Okay. There, let me work backwards from what you see in the center are actually woodblock um, collages. And one of the things that I was thinking about recently, these are actually, it's called Go Vagina. I thought to myself, you know, how does, every time I look at, up a, an image of vagina, it's this, it, 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 it doesn't, it really doesn't really say what that joy is. There's a joy that we have, that women have. And I wanted to, it, it, there's an explosion, there's a joy, there's a feeling. And I, I found this. It's it's like walking through, and there's a deep moment of of joy. Uh, I actually worked that similar uh, image. If you see part of this, is in um, in search of the Bindu point. The Bindu point is the, is the deep place in Earth that we can connect to. It's a, a very grounding place. It's a place where we can send. Um, let's say if we can send disappointment, if we feel that we have found a, a place that we just have energy that, that no longer, we don't want it to own it any longer, we can send it back to the earth. This is, um, so I have used this a piece of where we take that energy and through what I originally had have called the triumph of the soul, um, where there is a connection to the firmament and the earth. I just, as a, as a garden designer and as someone who has been an artist for, for a long, long time, actually these, the ink drawings were um, purchased uh, by a client of mine and in 1974, I uh, was just in a Zoom meeting with, with some of my college graduates for, uh, in 1970 and so, the, the, both of these were done in 74 and, and I, what I'm what I was it's like a sort of a stream of consciousness of identity it's like what we don't there's a lot of the feeling of, of being um, uh, faithful to the idea of being an artist uh, that, that if you if you have this ability to create imagery and you find, in a sense, solace in that. You find comfort in that. And, and, and actually, you go to that place to, that's a, a place of, of being free from disappointment. I mean, it can be tough, but at the same time, I, there's a mystery. There's a, there's a place of, of my imagination that I go to that I own and that ultimately, and in fact, this particular self-portrait, which is what I would say the, kind of the, the, the adventure of becoming the artist that I am now, that there is a, a kind of a map. It sort of starts from the bottom and here's a, I didn't, I wasn't a garden designer when I did this. It was just a, this is a fantasy, an image of, of, of where I was exploring who I was as a person and who I am as an artist. And, and there's a lot of trusting, I think, that artists have because we still say that there's a future we may not like what we see but we have we have the ability to to be courageous 
but at the same time, find a place where we are free from disappointment. And this is not a cavalier statement. I mean, I, I just think that we need to do that. We need to stay within ourselves and find that place that's safe so that we can kind of go and function out there as we move through this darkness and we begin to, to become a, a, a lighting ourselves as a match in a dark room. So I thank you always Petra for um, creating a space where I can show, show which is like, what was she thinking? Look at all of that. I just, you know, it's a, it, these are ink drawings that I have good grief, but they are also how I work in wood. You see, it was all, it was very consistent. I never, you know, that was not part of my vernacular, but it is now. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to continue to, we need to, we need to protect our sense of humor and we need to uh, treasure uh, and have great, great self-respect. And so I thank you for the opportunity to participate and um, go vagina. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Jane. And um, another thing that I love about your work is um, you are very much through the landscape and through botany, you are also a historian. You know, you, I feel like all of your work reflects a sense of history and constant self-examination and, and examination of the environment that is around us. And it's almost like you become an artist organism, like an ecosystem, like you're taking in, you're absorbing the environment and everything that's around us and you're oxidizing it and you're creating a new landscape. It's, it's called, trans, it's transformational work. I mean, if you don't like what you see out there, there's mm -hmm. an opportunity to change it, you know? mm -hmm. even if it's just changing it in your head. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not gonna go there. There's yeah. enough. There's there, we gotta have some integrity here. That we still have gravity, we still have you know the ocean, and so I just think that what we 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 want to transform thought patterns and create some activity that is that is significant and believe that it is. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. You you did it. <laughs> Great fun. Oh, good. Um, all right. And then our next artist is Robert Toll. Um, Robert, be so kind and join us. And um, tell us about modern dancer. Um, I'm looking for myself here. Uh, I, I, uh, I've been through a lot of, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're great. I've been um, through a lot of phases in my work. I've been doing this for like over 45 years. And um, I started off like with um, uh, flowers and trees. And then I went into more figurative. And my work has always been about transferring an emotion that I might have, like whether I'm lonely or jealous or depressed or uh, and what I'll do is like, I'll, I'll think about how I feel. And then um, through a sculpture, try to express that to other people and keep it very vague. And the uh, suggestion of what it's about is through the, uh, the title. So um, I always loved uh, the dances of Degas. So I've done like, um, I work with a lot of materials but I love working with found metal and um, try to use the shapes that I find and not manipulate it too much to, um, to uh, express what I wanna feel. Uh, for the dancer, it's usually the, um, the, the suffering that uh, a dancer has to go through, you know, like, and um, um, I've done a lot of pieces about that. And I can, uh, I'll do it like, you know, um, as realistically as I can get, you know, like with a figure or a horse or a bull or whatever. And, um, uh, and just try to make it express, like if I do a horse, you know, if I do a sculpture of a horse, I'll be like, what was the horse doing? You know, like I'm working on the piece and then um, uh, I'm like thinking about, well, what, what is the horse actually doing? And then I'll be like, well, is he eating or is he like looking at um, 
looking around and startled by something and is ready to run. So I'll do the sculpture and then the last 20% of the sculpture is transferring my idea of what, what the sculpture is doing. And so um, that, that's the basis of my work is, is expressing ideas. Like my latest work was about, um, was about um, the bombings in Syria. And I did a, uh, a series on uh, the bombings in Aleppo where I tried to express like the, uh, the destitute and uh, the situation of a political situation, forcing all these people to uh, radically change their lives. And then I did a, a series of sculptures on refugees and expressed that through uh, found metal abstraction. So the journey continues. Mm. Yeah, th that's a very powerful series. You're right. And uh, yeah, you absolutely, you nailed it. That's, that's what is so incredible about your sculptures is that they, they transmit such distilled emotion. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you distill the emotion and you just bring it into focus. And um, another thing I wanted to, just a few ideas about, about this piece. This piece is very um, important to me. And I think it's also, you know, it's, it's notable that I chose this piece. You're the only male artist in the whole exhibit. They're all females because that was the point. But this sculpture to me uh, expresses something about the, the, I think, the duality of the, the essence of femininity and the duality of, of vulnerability and strength. You know, you've communicated through the body language uh, a fragility, almost a, a protectiveness almost it's it's not a, an aggressive stance it's a passive stance it's very vulnerable very delicate yet the material the core is literally welded steel and found objects and it's again there's so many metaphors in there about we we make it work we find what life gives us and we piece it together and that's what it is to be a woman and you 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 have the the vulnerability to to, to receive and to give to life and to the people in your life and you stay soft, but you have to be strong on the inside. And um, so, you know, inadvertently you crafted sort of a beautiful visual poem about what it is, what it means to be a woman. So um, thank you for that. Beautifully said. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Let's see, our next artist is Barbara Nathanson. Um, Barbara, do we have you with us? <coughs> if I can find her. Am I, sure. uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, Barbara, uh, I am going to mute myself, but I wanted to show you, you can choose if you wanna speak about these pieces first or these, you let me know. Uh, how about we'll start with, uh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? It, no, doesn't matter. Well, welcome, Barbara Nathanson, and please tell us about your beautiful paintings. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, I appreciate having a beautiful gallery space to show this work in. Sorry that we can't have in-person um, receptions, but I hope some people do stop by the gallery. It's when I was in there looking at the work, I could see everybody's work it's much more personal when you can see it yourself and see the evidence of brush strokes or, or pressures of, of uh, ink, whatever that was materials were used. Um, my work has, um, ever since I began in, in school, has been about uh, I, textures and from nature or nature itself. I began my life in school as a dance major and was a dancer for many years, but reaching that age, I switched over to my other love, which was drawing. 
and expressing things that I felt even as a dancer, the emotional aspect of the of it. Um, I and you know, really enjoy when we are out and we've done a lot of camping, my husband and our children, uh, touching things and feeling what it's like and sometimes even closing my eyes and imagining how the history went for this texture to be created uh, the elements that affect anything where the wind or the uh, rain carves into various things rocks trees um, whatever is as out there including man-made objects that somehow are left uh, left astray and get affected by the elements and they create these fascinating imageries right on the objects itself. I mean, I like to close in on, on an aspect of it, of everything that I touch so that I'm trying to express the sensuality that comes from various senses. Um, this particular series that I have in here was doing the nature itself, but uh, where it has um, objective, image and yet it's invented because they are composites of places I've been, things that I've seen, and elements that have something to do with an emotional state. The two that you're seeing right now, the one on the left, uh, right after COVID, when we were all shut down and I was getting a little bit claustrophobic being in the house all the time, we went for a hike in the hills right behind us and this is what they look like. I painted this pretty much from a photograph, which is something I don't generally do, but I altered it somewhat as I do my own things. Um, and this is where it was the, the hills were just covered with wild mustard and, and other plant life that has this yellow tone in it or yellow green in it. And it was a bit of joy. And I thought, ah, oh, in this time of fear over this horrible illness that people are getting, there is still this sense of blooming spring going on outside. And the one on the, on the other, uh, on the right, uh, is a tree, a part of a tree that I saw in Japan. I was there for um, an exhibit that I had work in. And that was like last uh, November. And I thought the tree had a kind of a dancer quality to it and a sense of elegance that I really enjoyed. And just touching that Tree, it had a smoothness that I wanted to, to send off to the viewer as well. And uh, hopefully it gave them a sense of a kind of freeing and movement and happiness that comes from just growing and reaching for the sky, for the air, for the water that's coming. Anyway, and if you could go back to the others, the first... Uh, you switch back, yes. The one on the far left, I would just, the wind was blowing like crazy. Things were blowing all over in the air and birds are out there. And I came in and I just started painting. And this is during the time when we're all up in our house for the past, what, seven or eight months. And I'm, I'm trying to reflect that you look up, there's still activity going on, even though we feel like we're kind of confined in this, this house. And it gave me a lot of feeling of freedom there and sending my emotional state flying to represent what's out there. Just look and grab onto it. The other two are reflections of emotional states, again, using nature as I try to do to create what I, I sense from loss, and then we had had two severe losses right close to me and my family of young people. And it was devastating. And there was a sense of loss and alienation and a sense of loneliness and a, a sense of uh, separation that I saw in these family members. And I felt like I couldn't quite touch them or reach them. Um, and so I was trying to find something in nature that represents that particular thing that we all experience, no matter what kind of loss you have, whether it's death or a job or a huge disappointment in, in a goal that wasn't accomplished, you have that sense of loss. And this was what I intended my work to be. Um, 
other work that I do when it's textured abstracts, again, I'm trying to use them to represent the, the process of getting these textures and, and bringing along with it an emotional state that comes with a process of being bombarded, whether it's a human or you're bombarded by the things that come in your life that disappoint you, that leave you wanting, or whether it's in uh, an object where it, the process of time of wind and rain and sun beating on it and altering it. And I hope that when people look at my work that they can bring those aspects of their life that they've experienced that says, this, I, I feel like I relate to this in some way. And then I will feel that I did reach someone. Well, you. you certainly did. Um, thank you, Barbara. That was that was really amazing. Um, one of the things I was writing down in my notes when I was thinking about your work is that you have somehow produced a sense of purity in your work, and it, it ranges. It's like you've created two worlds here with these this particular series on display. It seems like on the one hand, there's almost this innocent purity, like a memory of the world as it was with the colors and the smoothness, yet there's no people. Again, the mustard hills, there's no, you know, people. I, I have to go back. I think there was a tree, but that's the, what stayed with me. And then on the other hand, you've created this almost apocalyptic landscape, this haunting, it, what you just described, it, it really brought it home. You absolutely distilled that, that sense of loss and loneliness. And, um, and yet there's somehow also serene and approachable. You know, they don't push you away. They almost invite you in to experience that loneliness. So um, anyway, thank you so much. And thank you for explaining this it's beautifully done. Thank um, you. All right, let's see. Sorry, ah, next we have Siri France. Um, let me first ask Siri, how are you feeling? Are you I'm, I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Oh, <laughs> but I, I'll keep it brief, but no, I'm, I'm fine. And I'm, I'm just really happy that you arranged this. I'm just so happy to be in another one of your fantastic shows. Oh, thank you. Um, and it's been lovely just hearing what the other artists have to say as well, because I haven't actually made it down to the gallery. I'm being extremely sort of self-isolated over here. Um, so it was really, and in fact, I felt a real sense of connection with what you were saying, Barbara, just about the um, sort of some, some kind of solace of nature, or at least some sort of um, being in touch with something in nature. These two pieces actually, um, can you see the two pieces? I'm seeing them. You're not just seeing the detail. Yeah? Um, anyway, so these, these two pieces. I did, I moved on to the next slide, which is- oh, That's great, that's great. So these two are, were from kind of earlier on in the year, actually before COVID, um, when I was, I live in Silver Lake and I do a lot of walking around the reservoir there. And I don't spend the whole time looking at my feet, but I do look down an awful lot. And this particular day, it was February, um, there'd been this really wild storm. I don't know whether any of you remember it. Um, but I particularly like going out after a, after a huge storm because you have all these incredible scenarios like this kind of gorgeous wreckage that you see everywhere of things that have been just sort of tossed to the ground. And so there was eucalyptus, there was various sort of twigs and flowers and all sorts of things. And I was really kind of taken with this. And because um, very often I look around and I see these little scenarios everywhere. I see these amazing little compositions that have just randomly, um, you know, formed themselves um, on the pavements. And there's also a sense of exotic, it being quite exotic for me as I'm not originally from here. So um, 
I snapped a lot of pictures and uh, none of them came out very good. Um, sometimes I do try and work from photos, but I generally try to work from life. So that's what started it off was this sense of really wanting to work from an aerial perspective and to have this sense of something having been flung. And I like the idea of like a bouquet being flung to the ground. It, it, there's a sort of narrative which you could take in any way about that. And it also forms quite an interesting visual for me. So I got home, went to the studio and um, we found some bougainvillea. It was in, I think in a bars or something. And I, and I threw them on the ground in what I hoped was quite a random way. And that this was just like sometimes how I kind of try and work because I wanted to work immediately and I wanted to work from life. And luckily they just fell in this very perfect little sort of geometric slot of sunlight that just I felt was really um, had an impact somehow. There was this kind of like curviness of um, this amazing look that Bougainvillea has. And then this kind of these uh, very strong geometric lines of the sunlight. So I just got to working on it and I, I worked in just one kind of, uh, one sitting, you know, a very long one, but I, I didn't want to start. I just wanted to do it all in a one hour sort of thing. And I'm never quite sure when a picture, you know, it feels like I want it to be done, but I, it's never really done done. It's more kind of how, how do I want to leave it looking unfinished <laughs> in what way? Um, and, and I was really pleased with that. And the other one is, um, was came more from uh, kind of a, a sense. I often think about the sense that shadows can make you feel a part of an environment. Like the environment comes into your shadow, and there's something very sort of lovely about the sort of like it makes you permeable. And um, and I had all the, this vision of all of these sort of things, you know, like I say, that were sort of scattered on the ground, and. Um, but so I started with that and I do a lot of, I started off thinking oh, maybe this should be really kind of, uh, kind of um, details, you know, really kind of sharp detail of all these plants. But then I ended up just really kind of getting into the texture of it. So, and it was in fact painted on another picture, which is often something I do. I'll have another canvas there and I'll take that as a starting point and then I'll sort of, um, so texture it up a bit and, you know, chop it around and maybe put a wash on top. And then there's this shadow was the final thing because it was just going to be pure, um, you know, scattered, uh, very unfocused, scattered feeling to it. And then I just thought I would bring this focus of the single um, shadow, which I did again with a, with a really light wash and that help bring the whole thing together and, and brought a focus to it. So they're very much related, these two. And I've got a whole series that is still ongoing. I mean, that was back in February, but I've been, I've been doing a lot of these um, sort of meditations and I, I kind of like the fact that they've got a bit of narrative, but it, the narrative is, is fairly open-ended. So I, I like to think that um, the viewer can, can find their own story because we all end up kind of, you know, bringing story to things, don't we? So, and everyone's story is going to be very different. So that's, that's my work. That's these works. And I'm very happy to have them in this lovely show. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Thierry. This is, yeah, they're, they're, they're beautiful pieces. And again, I was kind of thinking about what makes you, you you know, what makes your work your work, because you all, to me, are so unique. And um, as I was thinking about your work, it seemed that, to me, it seems like I, I, I can always feel a Siri piece. I can always, I, you know, even if it's a different subject, I can feel there's something in, and I think it has to do with your palette, the, the, the color treatment, but you also, you, you communicate 
somehow a note, an emotional note that the best I can describe it would be perhaps nostalgia. Mm -hmm. There seems to be someone observing. Um, and it seems to be from a perspective of the past, as if it's a memory, but it has sort of almost like an, an aching tenderness to it. Like it's a look of love. It's, it's a look of a sweet sorrow. Yeah, and I, yeah no, I like that. And I, there, is this, there is this sadness to some extent to the more melancholy. And uh, one of the things I, I actually have been really enjoying seeing everyone's work is that there there's a lot of emotion in 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 the work yes it's really you know that seems to be a real theme to it so I thank think, you. and i think you know just listening to you and barbara speak it's no accident that your works were next to each other <laughs> in like there's there's definitely hitting a very similar tenor there um and you also gave me one of my new favorite phrases i wrote it down gorgeous wreckage I'm saying that. <laughs> so, anyway. I, like I like a good wreckage. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, Siri. Um, thank, you. Uh, thank you for being with us. And let's see. Hold on. Who is my next beloved artist? Let's see. Nurit. Nurit Avasar, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight. She so generously spoke last month with a different pieces, but same series. And so um, I will instead read her statement. Um, please forgive me, I'm a poor substitute, but this is the piece she has on display. It's called Far Away and Long Ago, and it is mixed media. Um, Nurit writes, my practice is rooted in the process art movement. I paint, glue, sand, and tear away multiple layers of paintings. I often collage rust, plastic, fabric, and other materials to that compound surface. This particular mixed media piece is made of paper, cheesecloth, rust, rope, oil, acrylic, graphite, and color pencils. The rigorous process of tearing finished paintings, adding and rebuilding layers of unlikely materials in order to merge the distressed surface into one coherent image, metaphorically alludes to the power play throughout history. It is about forces that tear the fabric of societies and the creation of a new reality from the old fragments. It invokes the re-examination of cultural legacies and historical events and their weight on the presence. And wow, doesn't that feel appropriate for everything we're going through right now? So um, there's a lot there, a lot to unpack as they say. And um, I'm going to now just comment on the visual. One of the identifying elements of New Reed's work is that texture that is almost irresistible to the touch because it is like paper that's been, it's, it's, it's warm and it's soft and you, you, you just so badly want to, to caress it and, and feel what is that, Barbara, you would be going crazy trying to touch this. Um, but it also visually reminds me of two things. One, it reminded me almost of a, of a gemstone cracked open on the inside, like an amethyst or something. And the, the contradiction of such a, a stone, such cold, hard material, yet when you go close to it, it's so inviting to the touch. And um, the second part is a bridge to our next artist, Lily Fawn, actually, which is that when we get to Lily's pieces, there's one piece in particular that has ripples of water and they look very much like the colors cascading in this painting, these lilac tones and soft blues and grays. So they paired really beautifully. And that is of course something I always um, delight in when I curate shows to see the visual uh, red thread, the red ribbon that connects the artists to each other visually and emotionally. Um, so, I'm sorry that Siri is not, oops, uh, that Nuri is not here. But this brings us to Lily Fawn. Lily, are you by any chance here? 
No, I think that Lebanon, it, it, she probably had a connection problem. This was a very audacious adventure and I was so, so, so excited, but it's also understandable that um, it might've been difficult for her to be here. So I will um, read her statement and tell you a little bit about Lily's work. So these are photographs on aluminum. And Lily is from Vietnam. She was actually a Vietnamese refugee. She and her family escaped in a boat. And I forget, it's been a while. I think they made it to Malaysia and then long, long road of helpful, kind people helped them ultimately reach America. She grew into an adult, became a photographer and was able to go back to return to Vietnam and discovered the salt miners. And the salt miners happen to be uh, women. It's a trade that is pre predominantly or exclusively women. And the other thing that is sort of, um, as I just particular to her that I really appreciate is her technique is that she photographs the water she doesn't photograph the people themselves. She photographs the water at the shallow end as it reflects up the image of the person. And that's doing two things. On the one hand, she is shining the light on these people that are working in just inhumane conditions. They're covered in rubber from head to toe because they're in the salt water and it's, the, the heat is extraordinary. And so she's, she's shining a light on, on their condition and their hard work, yet she's keeping a distance. She's not intrusive. She's standing at a, at, a, at a far distance to photograph them. And at the same time, it brings together her, her artistry as well, because it transports the, these women into this alternate reality, this dreamlike world, that, that seem, a realm that seems like a galactic almost. Um, and then of course she also loves to play with distortions. So that was a little bit of an overall, please forgive me because Lily wasn't here to speak to the specific pieces. But um, yes, so Lily continues on with her social work also. She's always photographer and social worker. So that's why she's currently uh, stationed in Lebanon working with the UN. So anyway, thank you, Lily, um, for your work. Um, let me see who is next. Ah, next we have our Stacia. Stacia, are you with us? Stacia? I need to turn my sound on, sorry. Hi, okay. Hi. You made it. Yeah, thanks so much, Petra, you know, really um, for putting this all together, the time and the effort, the work, that it entailed to create this, you know, for the artists to be able to express, you know, verbally, right, on screen to everyone, um, you know, about their work and, and what it means to them. Um, you know, I, I have been a very creative person my whole life. And one of the things I wanted to do is not only, you know, show my own work, but I really wanted to uh, create a, a space for uh, showcasing and helping other artists to, um, you know, to share with the world, like what you're doing right here. Um, that's what the magazine is for, you know, the Art Quench magazine. And it, the last year for me with the world. Now I am emotional. So <laughs> especially talking about my own work. So if I get like that, please understand. Um, I know I've said to <laughs> Petra many times, if you look in the dictionary under the word emotion, there is like a big eight by 10 picture of Stacia. Um, I just, I have so much empathy for the world right now. I, I told you I'm going to get like this, but uh, it's one of the reasons I don't talk about my work so much. Everything that's been going on, um, it, it's been it's been a tough ride for all of us. You know, it really has. And I I started to create 
these pieces, um, they're plaster and acrylic and um, what they mean to me is, you know, there are different meanings to each, each painting um, about the different things that are going on. So in life, I think it's very, very important that we find a deep self-trust and we learn to express who we are, no matter who you are, no matter what you're, what you're doing, right? I think it's so important that we do this and all of you listening to you speak right now, um, you're all doing that. And, and I love that, you know, like I said, that's what I do. I promote, um, you know, all of you. I, I found myself in a space that a lot of things were coming to the surface within myself, watching the world and, and what was going on. So I, I created pieces and I gave them quotes. So love, and it has so many meaning, meanings to it, right? Um, you know, limbo, uh, perseverance, perfection, like the piece perfection that I, that I created here, you know, looking at it i mean it's 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 messy and it and it moves and it's you know it has all of this texture and and you know and a, and a force within it yet there are soft colors within that too right so it's all this mixed up stuff perfection is not you know it's not this perfect little you know uh, thing that that the world has kind of in the past placed on 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 that word you know the perfect face the perfect body the perfect house the perfect car you know it's just it's perfection what we need to understand the meaning that i'm trying to express with that piece is we are all perfect we were born perfect you know you know the i'm imperfectly perfect right so you 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 have to be able to open yourself up again finding a self-trust and understand that you are a very special human being you are placed on this earth to to give something right we all are given these gifts everyone has one um, you've got to find that gift. You've got to dig down deep. And when you do, what you're going to do with that is you're going to inspire others. You know, we're meant to help one another on this planet. We're meant to, to inspire one another. And I think the creative people of the world, which everyone has that ability to be a very creative person, um, but some are afraid. Again, they, they don't open up to that inner, inner self, right? Um, but I think, I guess my message for all of my pieces are really to, to give a meaning and to express something that's important when, within all of us. Um, because, I mean, that's why we're here. You know, that's what we're here to do. We're not here to hide and, and, and you know, we're supposed to use what we've been given to, to help one another. And I just believe that, you know, I'm trying my very best in this life to, to do that. And I think my, my artwork this, this past year is really, you know, really trying to share a meaning with each piece um, in expressing that. So it's something that, um, again, you know, I'm not the best at speaking about my own artwork. I'm really good at interviewing other people and writing about them, but you know, myself, I just, you know, I'm just extremely <laughs> an emotional person uh, and, and when it comes to myself. Like I need Petra to, you need to interview me and I'll, I'll answer your questions. <laughs> that that was amazing. I, I really was actually, um, as all of you, you guys are all, as at the same time as being such brilliant visual people, you're also all such gifted speakers. And that was so, so moving, Stacia, and so real, just incredibly real. And I know, you know, I was witness to 
the birth of this work with your solo show. And it's incredibly profound, inc incredibly moving. And, and the, the vibrations that, that you know, we talk about, sort of the, the, the layers of, of intention, the layers of reality that we weave into, that are woven into, into our artwork specifically, because you guys are putting pieces of your soul into these paints and onto these canvases into this metal and your blood sweat your 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 but also pieces of your soul are in there and that's what what's so mind-blowing about original work and and you all do that just masterfully and this particular series again i um you kind of nailed something, Stacia, with this just sort of raw power of color. And you're right, there are subtle notes in between, but the, the cumulative impact is just intense. Like sometimes when you're in front, you just vibrate. Like I just vibrate in, in front. And, um, but it's a, it's a beautiful ride, you know? It really it takes you, it's like a mini vacation. And it just takes you into a place of, thoughtfulness and um, peacefulness and mindfulness. And um, so please keep up the, the, the work. And again, thank you for sharing so generously. You are, you did beautifully and coherently and amazing. So thank you, all of you are amazing. So, but don't, don't, don't think for a minute you didn't speak perfectly about this work. So anyways, thank you. And um, with that, let me move on to our next artist, who is Suzanne Belcher. Um, speaking of raw and power and emotional, do we have Suzanne? Uh, I'm here. Hey. Yay. Hi. Um, would you, thank you so much for being here and thank you for showing these giving me another chance to show these amazing, powerful pieces. And I'm gonna mute myself now so that you can tell us about them. Well, first of all, uh, sort of like Stacia, I've never been really good about talking about my own work. Um, I grew up with a dad who was an artist by avocation. He did wood carvings. He was very talented. And he later did watercolors. He loved to paint nude women. He was in a lot of uh, workshops and classes. And um, I loved his watercolors. But I never thought that I would become an artist. It was about 30 years ago. Um, well, after I married my husband, I, I inherited two stepchildren. And I attribute my younger stepson, Jason, whom I really raised as uh, being <laughs> my impetus to escape and, and find something to do uh, in the interim times. And so I started taking art classes. And I started out as a landscape oil and watercolor painter. Uh, I've always loved nature. I grew up in the Southwest. <clears throat> excuse me, in El Paso, Texas, actually. So the desert was familiar to me. Um, but like I think Robert Toll, I had many evolutions over the years. I couldn't do the same thing all the time. And I had to keep moving forward. So, you know, I've done many, I still paint. Uh, I love image transfer collages. I'm not a doodler. I, I really have to have something I'm passionate about uh, before I have the muse to, to move on. And how I ever got into photography, it was just a, an evolutionary process. I always took photographs. And then I started taking photographs of my own shadow. And those were the first uh, inclinations of uh, people in my work. I, I always felt people intruded in the landscape. So with, with most of uh, my paintings and some, sometimes in my uh, photo digital collages, I've incorporated myself as well. These pieces are not me. <laughs> um, 
I had so much fun doing these collages. I, I got very passionate about billboards and I love blurs and uh, landscapes and movement. And it all started with downtown LA and freeing me up really as an artist. Uh, was no longer really dealing with referential work. Um, you know, I got focused and did a, a few themes. And these themes, with the exception of the one on the right, which is current state of mind, uh, were billboards. So even though they were really thrilling to do pre-COVID, the theme and the intention of the show Sustain really brought a little more serious tone to this work as I began to look at it saying, wow, okay, uh, these images all incorporate the faces of women with open mouths which might convey for us today that women and the disenfranchised really want their voice in these frustrating and challenging times that we're facing really as a divided nation. So as we see one piece has her mouth open, it's a little sensual, she has her tongue out. The next one, mm, she might be seeming a little overcome by something, maybe the heat. And the last one is screaming into a microphone. And all of these pieces tell a story that can be unraveled by the viewer themselves. On the left is eclipse and temperatures rising. They they both evolved from photographs that I took of billboards that were shown all over town at the time, advertising uh, a very popular TV series. And posters were plastered, plastered all over, uh, I guess you would call them construction site barriers where you see these posters of the same images. So I took pictures all over of these images. And I ended up collaging them with photos that I took of the um, dashboard uh, of my interior of my car showing the outside temperatures during one of our terrible heat waves. And during the time of the eclipse that we had, I took photos of uh, the eclipse on television. So both eclipse and temperature risings are focused with, uh, with an eclipse image. And we are eclipsed today. Our lives are eclipsed, I think. And temperatures are still rising. Uh, I'm very interested in environmental issues and uh, climate change and what it's doing to our wildlife, the fires, the it's devastating and heartbreaking to me. So even though these pieces were done before this show, they're still timely to me. The one on the right, Current State of Mind, the title <laughs> speaks for itself, I think. Um, it incorporates, this was a, a kind of a weird thing. We, my husband and I went to the music center and we parked. Uh, I don't know what level, uh, it might have been the first level. And we got out of the car. And as we were walking away, I looked in the side mirror. And I saw this image in the side mirror of the car. And it was a mural painted on the wall behind us reflected into the side mirror. And I thought, Oh, my God, I got to take a picture of this. So that is the um, basis of this particular image. You can see uh, up on the left, you can see the, the side view mirror. You can see the reflection. You can see her in the reflection there. And then I 
I love motion. I take photos at night when uh, I'm not driving, but my husband may be driving. And I take uh, photos on the freeway. I love glitches and movement. So, you know, I'm interested in things that I see on the road and things that I see standing still, uh, things that move me. And um, so all of these pieces might encourage the viewers feeling frustrated and isolated and trapped to just let it out and to just let it go. Uh, no matter what the situation or what we're dealing with at the time. And we've got a lot to deal with at this time. So in conclusion, you know, I'm really honored to uh, continue to be an exhibiting artist in this wonderful gallery that Petra has created. Um, and to be, you know, able to exhibit with all of these wonderful artists, uh, all of you, guys were really inspiring. I love to hear what you said and um, it's soulful and touching and I loved it. And we're able to be here tonight because of Petra and her extraordinary, never, never letting us down, never disappointing vision to her venue and her tireless support of her artists. And I'm gonna give a plug Petra and her artists can't do it all alone. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone who has tuned in tonight uh, to show up, to support us, to support this gallery. The gallery needs your continuing support to stay viable and to, um, you know, let art speak. So if you've seen anything tonight on these walls that have inspired you, that you love, uh, that you can't do without, please reach out to Petra. And, uh, you know, I think maybe for most of us, uh, bartering is, might be okay. Um, you know, these pieces need to find new homes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, Love being here tonight. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, Suzanne, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. <laughs> thank you so much. And actually, um, you know, I want to feel that back to you. The reason we're here is really because of you. If you hadn't pushed me that day when we spoke, when I was walking Portia, and you told me about the virtual reception and interactive <laughs> part of it, and I was just, you know, having a cow. I know <laughs> how I possibly going to mass you, you manage this, but um, thank you for for pushing me into it. I'm really again, I'm just loving spending this time with you, and it's it's so so enlightening to hear all of you talk. So thank you, Suzanne, for everything you shared. It's really really great. And another thing that that um, I always specifically love about your work is to observe the young generation come in and they they really connect with your work specifically this series like they always come in and they assume you're one of them they assume you're maybe 20 because you speak to their sensibility you've got your pulse on the times so like you through these collages you you nail the pulse, the emotion of the moment. And so I think that's just a testament to you as an artist that, that you are really plugged into A, the infinite and B, the present. So um, kudos to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Um, all right, let's see next we have Brooke Harker. Um, Brooke, were you, uh, are you with us? I am. Can you see me? I can't see you yet. Oh, you don't. I don't know if you just do. You, do you see me? You just listen to me. Then is that how it works? I think I need to change my screen options and see if I can. There you are. Okay, now I have you. Hi. I hope I look okay because I can't see myself, but I can see you. So oh, Lily is here now too. Okay. Hi, Lily. Um, okay. Well, <clears throat> if we can circle 
welcome back to you. I'm so happy you were able to join us. Um, so hang tight, please mute your audio because um, right now we are gonna have Brooke Parker share with us her work. Okay. okay. Brooke, take it away. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Petra. Um, this painting, which is called Remembering Matera, it, if you see the white that's going around it, that's that's actually not part of the painting. Oh, there we go. There's there's one where it's um, connected somewhat. If you if you've seen the photos that above above Petra's desk, you can see it's a triptych that is 12 feet wide, and the, the panels are 48 by 48 inches. And the, the medium is, the background is acrylic and then ink. And then it's difficult to see in a photo like this, but it's really thick oil paint and there's, and there's thick texture in there that is all applied and painted with, with knives, palette knives. So just to give you a little bit of uh, background on this location, I, um, Matera, Italy is a place uh, in Italy that is, a, is one of the oldest places in Europe. It's 9,000 years old. As far as the, the earliest si signs of human life there was 7,000 BC. And when I was li uh, living uh, in Italy in 2015 for a project, I had several people say, oh, you've got to go to Matera, you've got to go there. Because this, these buildings that you're seeing in this painting are actually carved into rock. And it's called Sassi di Matera, and Sassi means the rock. And it said that this is one of the only places in the world where people can say that they are living in the same place as their ancestors were 9,000 years ago. So it's a very sacred location. There's been a lot of films that have shot there, and such as Wonder Woman, Passion of the Christ, uh, and James Bond has filmed there. I think there's a list of 36 uh, uh, films from some from the US, some from Italy, some from other countries. Oftentimes they use this location to uh, mimic the Jerusalem because it's it's so so old looking, and there are something like um two I think there may be 250 churches that are in caves, which is it it's absolutely a stunning magical location. So I had gone there uh, in 2015, and I sat out on some steps and uh, did three ink watercolor sketches. And I, what I happened to have with me was a square uh, sketch pad. And so that is how this this turned into three square paintings and a triptych, because it, the, the city itself was just so magical and so captivating that I stretched my sketchbook out and, and created a triptych in my sketchbook. And then I waited about, I realize I'm not sure if I'm even talking to the camera, if people can see me, but anyway, I waited about um, five years to decide how I was going to, to, to share this place because it was so magical. And um, then that, that's what I, what I decided upon. So I guess um, I don't have a timer right now to see if I'm still supposed to be talking I can see you, Petra. Um, do you want me to say any more about my work, or, or what do you think? You know, I wasn't watching the timer either, but I would say if you, if you have more that you would like to say about this, feel free. Um, but that, that also is, um, you really did capture the magic, you know, I Thank guess. You. I guess. Um, do, do, you, do you have more that you'd like, some more specifics you'd like to share about this painting, or...? I don't know if there's anything you know specifically about this painting that I need to share. If you, I mean, no, there's nothing no, I have to say. I yeah. I just want to thank you for um, giving us the honor to debut this painting because oh, it's so happy about it. Hot off the press, and it has never been shown anywhere else, and it is enormous. So um, it was a feat and an exciting adventure to get it here. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, it was. <laughs> Also to to hang it and to have it here and um, the uh, what what the, the audience what you can't quite see in these photographs is again the the texture the amount of oil paint um, th that makes up the details of the colored the the flowers on the left or the the green the trees on the bottom the in between is so highly textural they're so thick they're about a, almost like a quarter inch thick. 
and um, the weight of the, the canvases is extraordinary. It, they actually bow down a little bit because they're so full of, of the paint. But what I just said I wanted to echo, which is that you really capture the, the, the essence and the feeling of the space. Um, I, I don't know how you do it, but you nail it every time. I just feel like, forgive me, this is so much better than seeing a photograph of it, you know, because I feel this has the whole, it has the light, it has the warmth, and it has the, the, the feeling, you Thank know, you. getting a sensory experience through, transported through the painting. So thank you so much thank you so much thank you for having me absolutely oh also if there's anybody watching this that wants to see the texture mm -hmm. there are obviously you have some some photos and i have texture photos that i can uh, i can have for you so that people can see more of the texture if there's anyone that wants to wants to see that if they don't get a chance to come into the gallery absolutely good point thank you for saying that all right thank you for having me Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Let's, next, we have Carol Cirillo Stanley. Um, Carol, of course, you will remember from her beautiful solo show last month called Still Life, and we are have three pieces here. Carol, would you tell us a little bit about your work? I will. Thank you so much, Petra. I'm going to read just a few words that try to explain the series. Still life stories, each comes alive in their tenacity of life and living. Still life stories, voodoo princesses, adventuresome queens, found along roadways, in gutters, and in Trader Joe's. Each speaks her truth behind the lens of nuanced light. Empowered goddesses of humanity they are. I've been a photographer for about 150 years, it feels. And I, 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 love, um, I love a good story. I love to tell a good story and I love to create a good story. And I've noticed and I, I've loved everything that everyone said tonight. And it's, it's given me a lot of pause for thought. And I realized that I've kind of come full circle when I, when I first started out uh, in photography many, many years ago, really close to 50 years ago now, I mean, believe it or not, uh, I remember taking pictures of flowers at that time. But as time has gone by, it has evolved so much more into being able to see in a very different way. So I feel that my work today is, is more nuanced, is more, um, descriptive than of course when, when I began so many years ago. I've also noted that my work in, in these days is very story oriented, oriented. So whether it's about flowers or whether it's about mannequins or, or empty buildings in LA, I'd like to take the, the nuanced, unrecognized common elements of life and give them center stage. So, that's what I've attempted to do here with this portfolio. So it's a personification. So these three that we see here tonight were all very eager to be in center stage. I mean, each one felt that she should be the one to speak. So what I convinced them to do is to allow me to say their names and just have one quote from each to you about their thoughts. So the very first one, which is grace, light, and determination is Adrienne. All right, and her, her sense of, of life is wear your stilettos, red lipstick, and find a sense of excitement. And we can certainly see that she has attempted to do that. You know, she's just got a little bit of wave of the hair and she is flamboyant in her own way. The second one, reinvigorating resilience, is Sabine. And Sabine, if we can see, is a very strong character. She's very crisp. She's very true to herself. And she says, be strong and sure and smile. And lastly, we see she spent time abroad, but there's only one home. 
And this is Madeline, and she is very whimsical, very elegant. And basically, she says, find yourself. It's there just waiting for you. Each piece was done in the studio. I would find these pieces maybe in, on the roadway, in a crack in the sidewalk, in the forest. And as I mentioned earlier from Trader Joe's, I bring them into the studio and use mainly natural lighting for them. And occasionally one might need a little burst of studio lighting to bring out her true essence. I began this portfolio at the end of February, beginning of March, and it really gave me a, a sense of lightness, a sense of um, a fun and whimsy in a very, very dark time. So there's nothing deep and dark about this. In fact, it's sort of a light distraction. Yet each one of these has a very individual persona about her. And when I would bring her upstairs into the studio and start working, looking behind the lens, sometimes the emotion was, was extreme because the uniqueness shone through. So again, thank you so much for having me, um, allowing me to be a part of this wonderful community. And I, I gotta say, mm, kudos to every one of you who has spoken tonight. It's, it's just meant the world. Thank you, Petra. You're, you're just, you're the best. Oh, thank you, honey. And um, thank you for, for that wonderful narrative about these fabulous women. And um, in my notes, sort of, as I was thinking about these, um, I was thinking, you know, I've told you this before, to me, with all their lightheartedness and all their joy, these are, these are psychological portraits of women. And I think that they are love letters. They're love letters to women, to the sisterhood. And um, that's exactly what the spirit of this exhibit was about for me, was what that exemplifies, is, is what you've done with these portraits, which is seeing each other which is supporting each other, which is celebrating each other and moving forward together on this journey that we call life. And um, so I just wanna thank you and thank all of you. And um, also I beg your patience with me because um, our, our artist from Lebanon has managed to join us. So this is live and we're learning all this stuff. So I'm gonna to try to go backwards in the presentation to allow Lily to speak about her work. So please bear with me. I'm gonna to have to move back here and then move forwards again. So um, Lily, go ahead and unmute your microphone, please. And I'm gonna take us on a quick whiz. Hi, this is, L <clears throat> I'm Lily Fan, and I am speaking from a village, a small village in North Lebanon the country. Um, I work here now, but uh, this series is called Reflections of Vietnam. And there are seven pieces that Petra has displayed on the wall, nicely, nicely displayed. Um, thank you, Petra. Um, this series was taken in Vietnam about, um, wow, it's about in 2008, 2009, so over 10 years ago. Um, I decided to go to Vietnam and um, photograph my country after finishing uh, in a consulting assignment in California. Um, and part of the, part of the <coughs> um, things I wanted to do is to, to shoot reflections off of water um, throughout the places that I, I, I travel to in the country. So as I was doing that, um, one, one of the trips was to a salt farm um, along the coast of Vietnam. And honestly, when I was taking these pictures, I was just pointing the camera down to, into the water, very shallow water. Um, and at this salt farm, all the, most of the workers, or actually all of them who were carrying these uh, dual baskets um, you know, on their shoulder, they're all women. Um, and I went early in the morning about five o'clock or 5 a.m. To, to noon. I was shooting um, in the hot, hot sun and the, the, salt, the salt farm, where, when you want to harvest it, it has to be during the warm, hot season. Um, so the sun would dry, you know, dry up the water and then, you know, for people to rake in the salt. 
Um, so it was amazing to see this woman um, early in the morning until afternoon, you know, taking turn, raking the salt, uh, bending, bending down, uh, raking the salt, putting it in the, into the baskets and then carrying it um, up the plank, up onto the top where they would, you know, dump the salt for the trucks to take, to, to, to pick them up, pick it up. Um, so it's amazing. Um, I'm just walking around with a camera and this woman was carrying about, each basket is probably 15, 20 pounds. And so two baskets and you're looking at about 30, 40 pounds that they carry up and down, uh, walking in the water, in the shallow water. So um, as I, as I um, go home, you know, with these photos and I, I pop it up, um, I pop up the contrast. The way you, the way I, I do the composition is, is the, to impact the ripples of water. Um, and no picture comes out the same as the other. Um, but it is so amazing to see these pictures um, that depicts the women and their hard work, you know, as they walk up and down, you know, all day long, day in and day out, you know, during the hot season in Vietnam, which is extremely hot and humid. And they're all covered up, you know, to protect their skin and they wear these cone hats. So as you see these, um, if you look at these pictures, um, like I said, none of them look alike, um, but they're all very beautiful in their own way. And we couldn't tell, I couldn't tell that, you know, they were these women working so hard, um, you know, in, under the hot sun. But it reflects the beauty of hard work of the women in Vietnam. They get paid very little, maybe a few dollars a day, you know, for all of this. Um, and most of us in the US, we'd rather not work <laughs> if we get paid that much, you know to do this type of hard labor. Um, but I thought it was just so beautiful that they would endure that, you know, to feed their family. Um, and when I look at them um, face to face, most of them were smiling, you know, and offering me their lunch um, as they take breaks. So I thought it was amazing. And it was, it's, it's a series that really touched my heart when I returned to my country um, after 30, about 35 years since um, our family escaped, you know, after communists. So yeah, this, uh, this reflection series is very special to me. Um, and I hope that the world can enjoy it. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's just priceless. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Lily. I'm so, so happy that everyone got to hear this in your words. Um, what an amazing story. And, and what an incredible service you've done to you know the the people and the, the women of your country. So yes, it is an incredibly powerful and moving series. Thank you very very much, and thank you for getting up at three thirty in the morning and being. <laughs> God bless. Okay, now I'm gonna give you guys forward, and next we have our solo exhibition, Karen Hansen still together. So I would like to invite Karen Hansen to join me, please. And um, I, however, gonna first do a little bit of an introduction. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there. So first I wanted to read Karen's statement. Karen's, Karen Hansen, still together. These are particularly trying moments in our lives. We have the isolation that has come with COVID-19, as well as its threat to our health and our economy. Also among our stressors are massive wildfires in the West and historic hurricanes and flooding in the Southeast. On top of all that is a contentious, fragmented political atmosphere. It's no wonder we feel anxious. My latest exhibition is called Still Together. The paintings are offered as serene resting places from our hectic, from our hectic complex world. They are moments of reprieve. So before I bring in Karen, I want to also offer you a catalog view of the individual pieces that are on display. And know again that all of these pieces in both exhibits are itemized in the exhibition catalog on our website. So if you see anything 
that you want to know more details on, you can go to the gallery website and then you keep scrolling to the right and you will find all the details before reaching out to us and hopefully coming to see them in person. And now I'd like to welcome Karen Hansen. Thank you, Petra. Hi, Karen. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you for this fabulous exhibition. The whole thing is just wonderful. And it's such a gift to be able to show our work in such a beautiful space. It's a true gift, thank you. Love you. Uh, this is called Birdsong. Uh, I was uh, painting this during the most recent wildfires. Uh, and I started thinking about all the lost wildlife. I'm gonna start, speaking of getting emotional, I'm gonna start to get emotional here. Um, we're, we're changing our earth and it's just, it's just heartbreaking to me. It's not just the fires, it's urbanization. It's the plants we put in our yards that may not be what birds and bugs and butterflies wanna eat. It's deforestation in uh, the Amazon for agriculture. It's air and water pollution. It's light pollution at night that affects birds and all the little critters that are running around uh, and they've done studies on noise pollution and how it alters bird songs. They adjust to the loud rackets and change their tunes. Uh, so all that said, that's a lot of negativity here. This actually is a painting about endurance. Um, because no matter how much we change their environment, birds continue to sing their songs and survive in spite of us. And I just would hope that we would bring some compassion to the creatures that we share our earth with. That's all I have to say about bird song. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Oops. Here we go. Here's the next piece. This is Rhapsody 1525. And this painting is really more about process for me. Uh, some days the painting gods are with you and some days they're not. And uh, some days they show up for a little while and then they go away again. They're very uh, flighty. Anyway, when I begin, when I always begin my paintings, um, I choose colors and, and that's strictly a gut thing. There's no reason I get up in the morning and I think today is an orange day. <laughs> uh, and uh, then I work from there, responding to what happens in front of me. It's all very intuitive and uh, experimental and I never know what's going to happen. As I worked on this painting, if you notice in the bottom half of the left side, there's this bloom that happens right in the middle. And once that happened, it, it's, it was a matter of the amount of water and the fact that I was painting this panel on, uh, on the floor in a little bit of an incline and um, the bloom happened and I, I just knew that that's what this piece had to be about. At the time, the right hand piece was on the left side and it was also flipped over 180 degrees. And at some point in the process, I was just moving them around and I put them against the wall like this and realized that this is how they needed to be. So it, it's all just uh, an adventure. Every moment of a painting is an adventure, a new adventure. 
So I flipped it over, I touched up a few more things and it, it suddenly all made sense. Um, and as for the title, uh, I knew that the bloom needed to be called Rhapsody. It just begged that. And 1525 is the Pantone number of the orange of the painting. So that's Rhapsody 1525. And the last piece is called Logistics. Uh, and it's just a commentary on the complex, complexity of our lives and all the things we have to juggle to create the tapestry of our journey. Um, as in Rhapsody, I picked the colors to start with and there was a portion that I fell in love with, which was a little bitty portion. This is a 40 by 40 painting. And the place that I fell in love with was maybe six by six inches. So then my job is to fill out the rest of the panel <laughs> to make sense of the six by six inch portion that I fell in love with. That's how my paintings go. <laughs> it's all an adventure, like I said. Uh, and, uh, that usually, what usually prompts those decisions, those choices that I make are that something surprising happens in the piece, whether it's juxtaposition of colors, uh, something that the, the brush did or the roller did or whatever I'm painting with, suddenly I think, well, that's unexpected. <laughs> and then I embrace it. And that's, again, how the adventure goes. So it's all a lot of uh, intuitive mark making on this piece and a lot of revision and experimentation. And uh, all of my paintings, I consider meditations. I sort of put myself in a different place as I paint, which I think is a gift for me to paint like that. And hopefully it's a place that other people can arrive at when they look at my work. Wow, thank, thank you, Karen, absolutely. I, I, your ability to evoke emotion through color is, is just exceptional. And you really transport the viewer into kind of transcendent serenity. And um, I think you really do, as all of you artists do in your own unique way, you speak to the eternal. And um, I just thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for articulating that journey so beautifully and uh, the adventure. <laughs> I love that, Karen. Thank you. Um, well, um, that uh, concludes our slideshow presentation. Um, I do want to thank you, don't go away yet. I wanna first thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Um, I think I am getting ahead of myself. I believe now is when we're going to move into the Q&A section. So forgive me for a moment while I pull up questions that we may have for any of our artists. Um, this, hmm, interesting, very, very interesting. I am not seeing any questions. God, I am so sorry. I think human- Maybe we've answered everything. <laughs> you certainly have. Um, I just didn't want to take away the opportunity from any of our attendees to ask you guys questions. <laughs> Who did the video? Okay, the video was done by Jason Ruscio. And um, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you missed it in the beginning, please stick around. We're going to play it again as a bookend to give you an overview of everything you've seen tonight and everyone you've heard from tonight. So it'll all kind of tie it together. 
Um, that was my answer. I'm sorry, unless maybe I am reading this correctly and we don't have any questions. It's possible. Um, yes, I, I believe that is it. So I want to thank you. Thank you all very much for joining us. Artists, amazing, beautiful artists and our audience. Uh, please do remember that we are open by appointment through October 31st. The, both of these beautiful exhibits are on display. Again, all of the information is on our website under current exhibit, GDCA Gallery, Gloria Delson Contemporary Arts Gallery, or as like my family in the South likes to say, um, Gersh Dern Contemporary Art Gallery. Um, if you go there and under current exhibit, you can scroll to the right, you will find every single artist alphabetically listed with each of their artworks with all the particulars. So don't be shy. And um, to conclude, we are going to play the Jason Ruscio exhibition video one more time, but I want to leave you with this blessing. Please be well, be safe, take care of yourselves. I'm sorry guys, I'm getting emotional now. Please be good to yourself in this time. Be good to each other, wear a mask and God damn it, vote. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Thank you.